Okay, so the second half of chapter five here in geometry, we are going to head away from our parallel lines and all of those angles, although they are going to be incorporated, but uh, we're gonna focus more on some new types of shapes. We're gonna talk about four-sided polygons. So uh, the rest of this chapter, we're gonna really focus on shapes that have four sides, get away from our triangles and into something new. So if you noticed in that title there was the word polygon and that is something we haven't talked about yet. So we're going to start off by defining what is a polygon. Now if you use your good language artsy skills, right, poly is our prefix and then gon is our ending and hopefully uh, you've learned about some of those things in language arts but poly means many, right? And when we have a polygon it means many sides. That's the technical language arts version of what polygon means. For us though, there's quite a few things that go into the definition of a polygon. So first of all, many sides means we have to have three or more, and these sides have to be straight. So three or more straight sides is the first part of our definition here. Let me this way. Oh, we're gonna have too much red. Okay, so three or more straight sides is a part of the definition of a polygon. These sides can only intersect at the vertices, which really means that you can't have overlapping sides. They can't crisscross anywhere except for at the vertices, so no overlapping sides. Okay. The shape needs to be enclosed, right? That means all of the sides need to connect. I can't leave it open air. All right. And then the last thing that goes into a polygon, which won't really come into play for us right now, but it will in chapter six, is that a polygon is always coplanar. All right. So coplanar really means two-dimensional or um, it lies on a flat surface. Okay, so it doesn't like curl up or anything like that. Again, that really won't come into play until chapter six when we start talking about things in three dimensions. But uh, for now, uh, we're going to have it as part of our definition, although we'll know that that doesn't really come into play for a while. Okay, so that's our technical. That all goes into that definition of polygon. So if I give you a few shapes, hopefully you can decide, is this a polygon or not? So first of all, if I draw something like this... Yeah, that's a polygon, okay? Even though it's really funky and has all kinds of weird nooks and crannies, right? It's still a polygon. It has straight sides, at least three. They only intersect at the vertices. It's enclosed, uh, and technically it is coplanar because I am drawing it on a flat surface. Okay, what about this? Definitely, that's a polygon we recognize called a triangle, but all of those shapes that have names that you're used to, uh, those are all technically polygons. They all come into the same category, okay? Um, what about this? Yes, this is a polygon too. Now it does look a little bit funky and we'll talk about that one in a second, but it is still a polygon. It still um, follows all of those rules. So last one would be this. So since it's not enclosed, this one is not a polygon. So you can kind of see the idea here. Okay, now of our three polygons, the triangle we're really used to, right? That first one and the third one, though, those look a little different. We're not used to seeing things like that. So uh, when all of those angles, you know, are kind of poking out like that, um, we call that convex. And then down here at the bottom, we call the ones that look like this concave, right? Where it's caving in. That's a good science word, right? So concave polygons, we're not really going to talk about in this book. So we are going to assume all of our polygons are convex like this, right? They don't 
cave in on each other unless they otherwise tell us, right? So if they want us to think about a concave polygon, then they need to specifically tell us that we're talking about a concave polygon. So we're going to assume that all of our polygons in this book are convex polygons. And what that's telling us is that all of those um, internal angles, all interior angles are less than 180 degrees, right? So, because if you noticed here, this angle right here, our interior angle in this concave polygon, that's more than 180 degrees, and we do not talk about those angles in this class. So that's why we assume that all of our um, polygons in this class are going to be convex polygons, unless they tell us otherwise. Okay, so that's the basic idea of a polygon. So let's talk about four-sided polygons. Now this is going to probably be some uh, a lot of pausing, right, so that you can write down what I already have typed up here. Um, but what I would recommend is we need to get all of these titles, all these different types of uh, four-sided polygons you need to have in your notes. What we're going to do today is just give you the basics, the basic definition of these polygons, um, and then over the next couple of days we're going to dive really deep into every little detail about each one. Yes, you're going to have to know every detail about each one by the end of this, um, but today we're just going to kind of ease into it. All right, so um, I'm going to draw a picture that goes along with each one. I highly recommend that you do the same. So to start off, our most basic here, a four-sided polygon. Four-sided polygon we call a quadrilateral, right? Any polygon that has four sides is called a quadrilateral. Now, when I draw this, I'm going to do my very best not to draw one of our specific ones, and I'm sure one of them is popping into your brain right now. <laughs> it's actually quite difficult to not draw a specific kind of polygon, but we're going to do this. So I'm just going to name this Q-U-A-D. You can name it anything you want. Quad, right, for quadrilateral. That's it. That's all we know is that it has four sides. Now, in this chapter, we are going to start talking about these segments called diagonals. So I just want to draw them in here just so that you can see what a diagonal is. So a diagonal is any segment that connects non-consecutive vertices. That's a fancy name, right? But it really what it means is if you connect vertices that aren't connected by sides, right? So there's a diagonal, here's a diagonal. So all quadrilaterals will have two diagonals and they're gonna, um, they're gonna connect the opposite vertices. So, you know, if I have more than four sides and I have more diagonals going on, that'll be up, coming up in the next chapter. But that's the idea is that a diagonal is just a segment that's gonna connect things that aren't connected by sides already. So nothing special about those uh, diagonals in a, just our regular old quadrilateral, but there will be special things that go on with those diagonals in our more um, specific types of quadrilateral. So I just wanted you to start seeing what those are. All right, so the next one is a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a very important quadrilateral. Hopefully you've heard of this one all right. Um, a quadrilateral in which both pairs of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So if you remember what a parallelogram looks like, it looks something like this, right? Do your best here to draw it, but we're gonna mark it up. Okay, so both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. That means the top is parallel to the bottom. It means the left is parallel to the right. All right. It says that the both pairs of opposite sides are parallel and congruent. So the top is congruent to the bottom, the left is congruent to the right. Okay. 
Now, I'm sure as you're thinking about this, or I hope at least, you're kind of connecting the dots with our parallel lines. Ooh, if I have these top and bottom lines are parallel, what does that tell me about some of the angles, right? Which angles are supplementary? Which angles are congruent? All of that stuff is going to come into play tomorrow and the next day, right? What happens if I draw in a parallel line? Ooh, now I have a transversal. Where are we going to have congruent and supplementary angles there, okay? So... That's the idea, right? If you can start thinking about it, you know, I say, oh, okay, well, I know that if I have same side interior angles, then they must be supplementary. So those two must be supplementary. Oh, same thing over here, right, must be supplementary. Oh, my opposite angles might be congruent then because I'd have supplementary angle, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? So hopefully today you're going to start processing through that and start thinking what else could be true and then tomorrow and the next day we're going to really solidify all of that okay so the next couple so the next one is a rectangle so a rectangle the definition of a rectangle is that it's a parallelogram that contains one right angle Ooh, interesting. Now, I'm sure you think of a rectangle in different ways, right? Here's really what a rectangle would look like. So if it's a parallelogram, well, that means we know that the opposite sides are parallel and congruent, right? And I'm sure that you knew that of a rectangle already, that these opposite sides, top and bottom, are congruent, left and right are congruent, right? It says that it has one right angle. Whoops. But let's think about if it's a parallelogram, right? If I know the top is parallel to the bottom, if I have a right angle at the top, that means I have a right angle at the bottom. If the right is parallel to the left, if I have a right angle at the right, I'd have a right angle at the left, and I could go all the way around, right? So I'm sure what you're used to thinking of the definition of a rectangle is that we have all four angles are right angles. That is like the most defining factor of a rectangle. You know, our opposite sides being congruent, that comes from parallelogram, right? And so the distinctive factor of a rectangle is that all the angles are right angles. All right, the next one, oh, I didn't even name this one, R, E, C, T, okay. The next one we have here is a rhombus. Okay, so rhombus, again, is a parallelogram, and the definition is a parallelogram that has at least two consecutive sides congruent. So here's my rhombus. Now, I'm sure, again, that you are thinking of a different, maybe, definition of a rhombus. But the definition of a rhombus is that it's a parallelogram. So again, opposite sides parallel and opposite sides congruent. So let's think about this, right? Top is congruent to the bottom, left is congruent to the right. But it says two consecutive sides are congruent. Consecutive means one after the next, right? Right? So if I know that this top side is congruent to the next side, that means that this would have to have two marks as well, right? Those two sides are congruent, but the top is congruent to the bottom, so the bottom would have two marks. So really, if it's a parallelogram that has two consecutive sides congruent, that really is telling us that all sides are congruent. So that's really the defining factor of a rhombus. A rhombus has all sides congruent. It is a parallelogram, so the opposite sides are parallel, but all of the sides are congruent in a rhombus. Okay, hopefully this is going okay so far. Pausing when you need to to write down. Okay, so here's our next couple. So the next one is a square. Now, I'm sure you guys have a really great idea of what a square is. Technical definition of a square. Again, a square is a parallelogram. Ooh, that is both a rectangle and a rhombus. So if I look back here, a rectangle has all four, si four angles right angles, and a rhombus has all sides congruent. So that's really what makes up a square. There's 
all the things about a rectangle and all the things about a rhombus, both, right? Oh, hopefully that makes looks even to you, right? So again, all opposite sides are parallel, yep, but I know that all sides are congruent, and I know that all angles are right angles. Okay, I also know opposite sides parallel, we got that too, but the big idea for a square, all sides congruent, and all angles are right angles. That's what it means when it says it's a rectangle and a rhombus. So again, we're going to find all kinds of cool stuff that happens because it's both of those. There's a lot going on with squares, um, but that's the basic idea of it for today. All right, you probably heard of a lot of those. How about a kite? A kite is one that just doesn't get brought up a whole lot. Okay, so a kite. Notice this one goes back to that it is just a quadrilateral. So this is not a parallelogram. This is a quadrilateral that has two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides congruent. So the word disjoint is a new one. This is a good vocabulary word that uh, kind of stumps a lot of people for a while. Disjoint means separate and specific. So again, I would highly recommend writing that down because that's a word that you just probably haven't used before. So when I draw a kite, hopefully you are able to draw a kite maybe already but I'll tell you what separate and specific means, right? Disjoint. So here is my kite. Two disjoint pairs of consecutive sides congruent means I'm gonna pick a pair, maybe up here at the top, right? Consecutive sides congruent, there's one pair, and then down here is a separate pair. Notice these two pairs, I don't have the same side involved in both pairs. That's what separate means. Specific means I can't just pick any two sides that I want. They're specific pairs of sides. So like top two and bottom two, as long as it's oriented this way, right? So if it's spun on its side, it'd be left two and right two. But you get the idea. Disjoint means separate but specific. There are two specific consecutive uh, sides congruent and then another two specific uh consecutive sides congruent. That's a kite. All right. Next we have trapezoids. So our regular old trapezoid, okay, as again a quadrilateral, so not a parallelogram this time, a quadrilateral that has exactly one pair of parallel sides and these sides are called the bases, okay? So a trapezoid has only one pair of parallel sides. I'm gonna draw it like this, right? So the top side and the bottom side, in this case, right? If this is my trapezoid, just a plain old trapezoid, those sides are parallel, and we would call those the bases. Here's a base, here's a base. But notice, uh, this side, the TR, whoops, excuse me, TP is not parallel to RA. Notice how they are definitely not parallel. So it only has one pair of parallel sides. There is a more specific type of trapezoid that we call an isosceles trapezoid. So an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid, so we know it has one pair of parallel sides, um, where the non-parallel sides are congruent, and we call these non-parallel sides the legs. So this is probably the more typical type of trapezoid that you are used to seeing that looks like this, right? We often draw an a isosceles trapezoid when we just draw a trapezoid. So, okay, so that means I have my bases, right? Top and bottom, these ones are parallel. And it says the non-parallel sides are congruent. So the other two sides are congruent and we call those the legs, just like we do with an isosceles triangle, the congruent sides are called legs, and isosceles trapezoid, the congruent sides are called legs as well. 
All right, and again, there's a lot more going on with isosceles trapezoids when you think about consecutive angles and all of that stuff, but we'll get into all that tomorrow. If you want to start drawing some diagonals in and seeing what you think about them, that would be a great idea to kind of move yourself into the tomorrow's and um, the next day's lessons. But for now, this is the basics. So you've got it all, right? We talked about polygons. We talked about naming poly, uh, four-sided polygons. Um, and then we really kind of just went through all the basics of all of our different types of quadrilaterals.